Welcome to Franklin First United Methodist Church. Where we seek first the kingdom of God and meet the needs of others. Where hope is grown and spirits are fed. Where you are loved and the peace of Christ overcomes all. We're so glad you're here. here. Welcome to worship. Friends, what a beautiful day it is outside. I'm Pastor Sarah Carty, your Pastor of Adult Ministries. It is wonderful to be with you on this special day which in which we celebrate Palm and Passion Sunday. And it is our entry into Holy Week. So we are glad that you are here today. If you're with us here for the first time today, after you get done with the service, I would invite you to go out. Pastor John Melick is out in our lobby and would love to welcome you. He's got a special gift for you. He's out there cheering. I can see him in the lobby. So it is great to see you. Also, when you are out there, I would encourage you to go across, if you haven't already signed up, to be a part of our wonderful Run for Missions. That is our featured event uh, today. So as you leave today, go out and sign up if you haven't already done so. A great way of being able to get out, see our community, and be able to support the missions of this congregation. Second, I just wanted to make sure that you are well aware of when all of the different things are happening. For those of you who are joining us online, we also want to invite you to actively participate in the Holy Week services. Our services start this week after today on Thursday for our Monday Thursday service at 6.30. We will be remembering and celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion as we focus on the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples. And on Friday, we will come back again and have a wonderful uh, Tenebrae service at 630 for celebrating Good Friday. A beautiful, beautiful walk with music of all types to be able to really dive into the sacrifice that Jesus gave for us on that day. And then, of course, we'll come back on Easter morning all day. And so we start at 6 o'clock out in the Glade right here on our main campus. We've got services here, of course, at 8.30 and 10 and 11.15 and a historic sanctuary at 8.30 and 10. We are looking forward to being able to worship with you on Easter Sunday. All of those will also be live streamed. So those of you who are joining us from out of town or at home, we look forward to being able to celebrate we, with you as well. And, of course, today is the big Easter egg hunt. So we just want to remind you uh, to make sure that you are here no later than three. Our accessible egg hunt for our special needs friends starts at 245 in a little bit different location. But um, make sure you're here on time because once it starts, it's done in a flash. So we are really excited to be able to join with our community. Please make sure you're bringing your friends, neighbors uh, to be able to welcome them as we celebrate this wonderful uh, joyous time together as we begin our Holy Week. So all of the details as well as a number of things that are happening right after Easter are in your bulletin that you can find on your church app. All of those things are also online on our website and we hope that you will take note of all the different things and make sure that you are signing up for them. So as you take out your church app this morning and you look at the bulletin, we also hope that you will check in uh, with us this morning, either if you're here in person or if you're joining us online. And so now I would just invite you to just take a deep breath in, to breathe in the Holy Spirit, and to set aside all of those things that may have been on your heart and your mind so that we may fully focus our Lord this day as we celebrate Palm and Passion Sunday in spirit and in truth. 
And so I invite you to begin our worship time together by passing the peace of Christ that he has given to us and stand and greet your neighbors and pass that peace. Welcome to worship. <laughs> Good morning, friends, and welcome indeed on this not only Palm Sunday for us, but Palm and Passion Sunday. Many, many years ago in the life of not just our church, but the church of Jesus Christ, many folks recognized the power of hearing the full experience of Christ's last week, not just the triumphant entry into Jerusalem, but also walking with Jesus all the way through to his betrayal and crucifixion so that come Easter morning we would be ready fully to celebrate the power of what Christ has accomplished. So today with uh, brave hearts we will walk with Jesus all the way from the morning, uh, from this day of Palm Sunday all the way to hear the full story of his passion and we'll say more about that later so that next week we will be ready fully to celebrate uh, Easter morning and the triumph of the risen Christ. To that end, we begin our morning of worship where Christ began this holy week with his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. So to begin with, I'll invite you to stand and together we will hear from Matthew's gospel, Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look! Your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered into Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, we begin our worship with this call to worship to echo the sounds of hosannas from that Palm Sunday. The words of our call to worship will appear. Will you join me? Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let's worship and sing together.
Sing with me. 
Amen. You may be seated. Friends, as we enter this holy week, we come to our Lord in prayer for ourselves, for our church, for our community. And we also take time to present our tithes and our offerings to support the work of Jesus Christ through our congregation. Yesterday, people gathered here on main campus. Our creation care team planted new growth and taught confirmands all about the beauty of not only God's creation, but what God is creating here on this campus now. The giving garden was in full bloom, working, planting to be able to feed our hungry neighbors. And this afternoon, literally hundreds and hundreds of people from our community will come to experience the joy of the egg hunt, to be able to come together and celebrate all that God has done for us. People who may not know Christ will come here and experience the love and the grace that this congregation can offer. And that is fueled, friends, by your generosity by your tithes, by your offerings, by your time, your gifts, and your talents. And for that, how great is our God? There are many ways that you can give. They're listed on the screen. You may give online. You may give through your mobile device by texting or through the church app. You may send in a check or our ushers are here to serve this morning. As the plate passes, you may put your tithe or offering in that this morning. It is a blessing to be able to give to our Lord. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. O oh God of grace and God of mercy, we thank you for this beautiful day and for reawakening our souls each spring. We thank you for the opportunities to open up our campus to the community and to celebrate this afternoon together as friends and family in your love and in your name. So help us, Lord, to seek you out this day and in the days to come. So enter into our lives as Jesus entered into Jerusalem. For we greet you this morning with palms in our hands and loud hosannas on our lips. And even today we cry out, save us, O oh Lord, save us. Save us from those things that separate us from experiencing the love you offer. Save us from our inward focus on ourselves and replace it with a laser focus on you. Give us an outward focus to serve others. And save our world, merciful God, from poverty and hunger, from oppression and inequality, from anger and hopelessness, from violence and war. For we know that is why you came and why you offered your life, so that we may have not only eternal life, but do your kingdom work here and now. And forgive us, merciful God, and fill us with your pure light so that we may reflect Jesus in our lives. Settle our spirits that we might know just how far you go to bring us the cup of salvation. And in the midst of all of the upcoming week of betrayal and denial, help us to forgive the betrayals and denials we commit in our own time and place. And bring us hope, Lord. Bring us hope where we have allowed fear and confusion to reside. Bring healing of body and mind to those who are ill and suffering. And bring peace to this world, Lord, especially Gaza and Israel and Ukraine and Haiti and all of those other places where war and violence exist. And Lord, guide our leaders of all nations in their decision making. We pray for all of those who are grieving this day and in the days to come, especially David and Carla Landrum and family at the death of David's mother and Phil and Lori Jaros and family at the loss of Lori's mother. And dear Lord, let your warmth, the warmth of your mercy and love, pour out on those gathered here and those joining us online as we prepare to walk this final week to the cross with you. For Lord Jesus, in your costly gifts to us, us you have provided to us a way to live and serve. Through the gifts we now offer, we express our longing to follow and serve you wherever you may lead. 
So bless these tithes and offerings and fill them with your power so that lives may be touched, the world transformed, and more people may come to know you. And help us, O oh Lord, not to rush into Easter morning, but quiet our hearts, quiet our souls. Grant us time to be holy as we wait and listen for you. Lord, we yield ourselves to you and to your will this holy week. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ, who gave his life for us and taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The tithes and offerings will now be received.
Friends, you may be seated. So we've heard the cries of Hosanna. We've waved palm branches as the crowd did that welcomed Jesus on that first Palm Sunday years ago where he was received as king and conqueror. And those who cried out gave thanks to God that their Savior had arrived. And through the years, the church has recognized that for folks who might come to worship on a Palm Sunday where that was the only focus and hear the joyous cries of Hosanna and then come the next Sunday for Easter to hear Christ is risen, hallelujah, alleluia, then without any more context in the middle, it could come across that this Jesus fella only has wonderful days. But of course we know that there's a lot between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. Now it's probably true that there was a time when congregations could count on lots of folks being able to be present for services on Maundy Thursday and Good Friday, and there would fill in the gaps between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. And by all means, I hope you can join us. Our worship on Maundy Thursday and on Good Friday will be powerful, I expect. But it's also true, as people's lives and weeks have gotten more and more full, the chance of a crucial number of folks being able to attend church two more times during the busy week might be less and less likely. And so in the collective wisdom of Christ's holy church, there has been an understanding that on the Sunday before Easter, it is appropriate and even very, very meaningful to go with Christ through the whole week. And so that is what we'll do now. In place of a normal sermon time, Sometimes folks applaud when I share that. Um, in, in place of a normal sermon time, we are simply going to let the Word of God speak for itself today. Many of you have worshipped with us through the years when we've done this before. And I hope you will find it touching and meaningful and profound. 
In just a few moments, we'll offer a prayer together, and then one by one, we'll have different voices, different readers come and read for us the experience of Jesus' last days, last hours together with his disciples, through his last supper with them, through his betrayal, through his trial, through his crucifixion, and ultimately to his burial in the tomb, sealed away. As those words are read... We'll simply hear the words of the gospel. There'll be no introduction of each reading. There'll be no concluding response as we so often do to our scripture readings. What will be available to you, and I'd invite you if you find it meaningful, is that for each of our readings there will be images of classical art depicting various parts of the different portions of the story of Jesus' passion. They'll be on the screens. You'll see some of our banners here. If it's helpful to you, if it helps to to draw you into the the experience of Jesus, then by all means, focus on those images as you hear the words of the reading. And above all, let your heart walk with Christ. Go with Jesus each step of the way that he will walk for us so that we might dare not only to hear the shouts of Hosanna, but also to know the depths of his pain and suffering, the depths of his love for us, so that when Easter dawns in a week, we'll be fully ready to know the power of saying, Christ is risen, alleluia. Friends, I'd ask you to join me As we pray together, there'll be a prayer that sets the tone for our words here, and we'll pray it when the words appear on the screen. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus Christ, accept our songs of praise as you journey to your cross, and enable us both to grieve at its necessity and to be renewed by its power. In your name we pray. Amen. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he began to take an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make preparations to, for you to to eat the Passover. And he said to them, go to the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And so the disciples did as Jesus had directed them. And they prepared the Passover meal. And when it was evening, he took his place with the 12. And while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed. And they began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. And he answered, The one who dipped his hands into the bowl with me will betray me. And the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. And Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. And he replied, You have said so. And while they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, Take, eat, this is my body. And then he took a cup, and after giving thanks... He gave it to them and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my father's kingdom. And when they had sung the hymn, they went out to the mount 
of olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. After going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass for me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour of the hand of the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve arrived with him, was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, 
as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him. And she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field, as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price. And they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, You say so. 
But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent, him, sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You, who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, 
and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lema, Sabak, Tani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place. They were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which had been hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go. Make it as secure 
as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. We've walked with Jesus now from the glorious words of Hosanna to the desolation of a tomb sealed and guarded. And there we'll wait with him for the morning. May the depth of Jesus' love Guide us this holy week as we prepare for the glory we know awaits on Easter. In gratitude to God for his great gift in Jesus Christ, we affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. May I invite you to stand as you are able to watch the screen for the words if you have need of them as together we unite in this historic confession of the Christian faith. To say, I believe believe in God, God, the the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, as we go through this holy week, may the power of Jesus' love resonate in your hearts. May it guide you each day. So that on Easter morning, our hallelujahs, our alleluias, Christ is risen, may ring powerful and true as we give thanks for the Lord who has given himself for us. Let's sing together.
his heavenly Father, a fragrant offering. And let me comfort the man of sorrows, let me sing. For the joy of Easter, we hear the cries of Hosanna and we feel the weight, the weight of Jesus' gift of himself for us. Let that weight rest on you as we enter this holy week, knowing that Jesus' pain and sorrow was genuine and that it is not the end. Go and may this week prepare us for the joy that is to come. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. It has been such an honor to worship with you as a part of the congregation of Franklin First United Methodist Church. For information about how you can become connected with our church community, you can find us at franklinfumc.org. From there, you can sign up to receive our newsletter, find ways to serve, let us know of a prayer request, and make offerings that further the mission of this church. Be sure to join us again next week. We'll be here at 8.30, 10 o'clock, and 1115. It's great to have you with us today. God bless you all.
Welcome to Franklin First United Methodist Church. Where we seek first the kingdom of God and meet the needs of others. Where hope is grown and spirits are fed. Where you are loved and the peace of Christ overcomes all. Glad you're here. Welcome to worship. Good morning, and indeed, welcome to worship. What a beautiful day it is outside today. And I'm Pastor Sarah Carty, your pastor of adult ministries, and we are so glad that you are here today as we come to celebrate Palm and Passion Sunday, our entry into Holy Week. So if you're here with us for the first time, the service is a little bit different today, but we are so glad that you can participate in it with us. So I'm going to encourage you all, if you're first-time visitors, and you haven't had a chance to check in and meet with Pastor uh, John out in the lobby to do so as you exit worship today. There's a big welcome tower, and we have a special gift that we have for you. And if you're joining us online, we encourage you to just type in the word coffee in the chat, and our online host will have a special greeting for you as well. And we invite you to, usually we don't ask you to take out your phones, but uh, we would encourage you to do that and download the worship bulletin. You can uh, give your tithe and offering and leave a prayer request by using that. And also it has an opportunity for you to check into worship if you were not able to do so before you came in to worship this morning. We have many things going on this week in worship and in worship services throughout the week, and I wanted to highlight a few of those for you today. And first of all, when you leave today, if you didn't have a chance when you came in, there's a special mission event that you can see, and that is our Run for Mission. It'll be happening on the 14th of April. It is our big fundraiser for our supporting our missions, and we hope that you will take part in it. You can walk, you can run, or you can just cheer everybody on, but we hope that we you will join us for that special day. You can see Sign up right across the hall um, today and also online. We have a number of worship services this week we want to draw your attention to. And the first during Holy Week is our Monday Thursday service. And that will be a service of communion right here, 630, uh, right here in this very space. It is also available to be live streamed for you. We'll be celebrating the Last Supper and the wonderful holy meal of communion on that day. And then on Friday, we will be having our Good Friday uh, Tenebrae service at 6.30 right here in Wesley Hall and main campus. It will also be live streamed. It will be a beautiful, beautiful worship experience full of a variety of different uh, musical uh, accompanists and our wonderful choir. It will be just beautiful, and we hope that you will share in that high and holy day when Jesus gave so much to us us. So both campuses here, right here, both times 630 for those services. And then of course, next Sunday, we want you to join us for Easter and we will be having services uh, on at six o'clock at the Glade for our sunrise service at 8.30 and 10 at Historic and our regular worship hours right here on main campus, 8.30, 10 and 11.15. We hope that you will join us for one or as many services as you wish as we celebrate next week. And lastly, wanted to remind you today, we have the glorious uh, opportunity at 3 o'clock today to come back to, to our campus here for our, our Easter egg hunt. It is the 
Easter egg hunt. So you want to be here. Make sure you come on time uh, because, you know, once the hunt has happened, it's like locusts that come across the fields. So please make sure you're here on time. Our accessible egg hunt for our special needs families will be uh, at 245 for those who have made reservations. So we hope to see you. Please make sure you're bringing friends, neighbors, family members to come and celebrate the joy this afternoon. There are many other opportunities right post-Easter, so we hope that you will be mindful of looking at those in your church bulletin and also on the website. There are a number of um, events happening right that week after Easter, so we want to make sure that you sign up for those, and you can find all that information on the app or online. And so now I would invite you to prepare your hearts for worship, so to take a deep breath in, to breathe in the Holy Spirit, and to leave your cares and concerns, all those things that you brought into worship, set them aside for this time, this hour, as we come to worship our Lord in spirit and in truth. And to begin our worship this morning, I would invite you to stand to pass the peace of Christ with one another. Welcome to worship.
Welcome, friends, on this Palm Sunday. For us, Palm and Passion Sunday. We rightly begin with songs of Hosanna, with which we will join our own voices in a moment. By the end of our service today, we will have walked all the way to the cross and beyond with Jesus. This is a day where we both hear the glorious shouts of praise and consider the depths of love that Jesus goes for us on this Palm and Passion Sunday. But as Jesus began that week, so we begin this week. And I would invite you now to stand with me and to hear from the Gospel of Matthew the story of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem and then remain standing for our call to worship and first hymn. The scripture is taken today from Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. And friends, for our call to worship, we join our voices with those who first cried Hosanna. Will you join me as the words appear of our call to worship? Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our opening hymn is Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Let's sing together.
Amen. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, will you join your voices with mine to pray the words of our opening prayer? Again, the words will be on the screen. We pray together on this Palm and Passion Sunday and say, Almighty God, on this day your Son, Jesus Christ, entered the holy city of Jerusalem and was proclaimed king by those who spread their garments and palm branches along his way. May we too hail him as our Lord and King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. In his name we pray. Amen. Our hymn is All Glory, Laud, and Honor. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4. Let us sing together. seated. Friends, as we enter into this holy week, we come to our Lord in prayer. Prayer for ourselves, for our church, for our community, and for the world. We also take time to present our tithes and offerings for the work of Jesus Christ through our congregation. There are many ways that you can give your tithes and offerings. They're listed on the screen. You may give online by texting or using your church app on your mobile device through the envelope uh, by sending it in in the mail. Or our ushers are here this morning as to pass the offering plates as they go by. You could put it in those as well. Know that as there are many ways that you can give, that your work is doing God's work in this world each time that you give through your generosity. It fuels the ministries, not only to affect this congregation, but throughout the world. So I would ask that you would bow your heads in prayer with me so we can bring our prayers and petitions to the Lord and bless that which we bring. Let us pray. O God of grace and God of mercy, we thank you for this beautiful day and for reawakening our souls each spring. We thank you for the opportunity to open up our campus to the community to celebrate you this afternoon at the Easter egg hunt where friends and families will gather in your love and in your name. So help us, O oh Lord, to seek you out this day and in the days to come. Enter into our lives as Jesus entered into Jerusalem. 
for we greet you this morning with palms in our hands and loud hosannas on our lips. And even today, we still cry out, Lord, save us. Save us from those things which separate us fully from experiencing the love that you offer. Save us from our inward focus of ourselves and replace it with a laser focus on you. Give us an outward focus to serve others in your name. And save our world, merciful God, from poverty and hunger, from oppression and inequality, from anger and hopelessness, from war and violence. And forgive us, merciful Lord, and fill us with your pure light so that we may reflect Jesus in our lives. Settle our spirits, dear Lord, that we might know just how far you go to bring us the cup of salvation. And in the midst of this upcoming week of betrayal and denial, Lord, help us to focus and forgive us, dear Lord, for the betrayals and denials and as we commit our own that we commit each and every day in our own times and place. And bring us, Lord, to a place of hope where we have allowed fear and confusion to reside and bring healing of body and mind to all of those who are ill and suffering and bring peace to our world, dear Lord, especially in Israel and Gaza and Ukraine and Haiti and all other places of unrest. And guide our leaders and leaders of all nations, Lord, in their decision-making so that peace might be more than just a dream. And we pray, dear Lord, for all who are grieving, especially David and Carla Landrum and family at the death of David's father, and Phil and Lori Jaros and family at the loss of Lori's mother. And dear Lord, we ask that you would let the warmth of your mercy and your love pour over us here and those who are joining us online as we prepare to walk this final week of the cross with you. Lord Jesus Christ, in your costly gift to us, you have provided us a way to live and serve. So through the gifts that we now offer, we express our longing to follow and serve you wherever you go. Bless these tithes and offerings and fill them with your power so that lives may be touched, the world may be transformed, and more people may come to know you. So help us, Lord, not to rush to Easter morning. And quiet our hearts, quiet our souls, and grant us time to be holy as we wait and listen for you. We yield ourselves to you and to your will this holy week. We offer this prayer in the holy name of Jesus the Christ, who gave his life for us and taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The tithes and offerings will now be received.
You may be seated, my friends. You may be seated. Can you imagine the joy of that first Palm Sunday, the energy that surrounded Jesus as he made his way into Jerusalem and was greeted with shouts of Hosanna and waving palm branches and cloaks spread across the road to greet him as a conquering king. And then, only days later, for the whole scenario to have changed, and where there were once cries of Hosanna, there came calls, crucify him. From the joys of Palm Sunday to the depth of sorrow and agony of Good Friday, it is our privilege to walk with Jesus. The church universal, in its wisdom years ago, began to recognize that If someone were to come to worship on Palm Sunday and hear only the cries of Hosanna and then come again only on Easter Sunday to hear Christ is risen, Alleluia, one could begin to get the idea that this Jesus fella only has really good days. But of course we know there's more to the story. There likely was once a time when The world and life was not so busy, and you could expect reasonably that many, many folks who worshipped on Palm Sunday would be able also to worship on Maundy Thursday and Good Friday before Easter to fill in the rest of Jesus' week. But life is full, and times are busy, and while we certainly hope that you will be able to come to Maundy Thursday and Good Friday worship services here we, with so many of our brothers and sisters in Christ, recognize the power of today hearing the entire experience of our Lord on that last week that moved so quickly. So for the next several minutes, that is what we'll do. In place of what is normally a time for a sermon, I appreciate it when folks don't applaud when I say we're not having a sermon. That really means a lot to me. In place of that proclamation of the word, today, as we have done many years now, we will simply let the word of God speak for itself. In just a moment, we will go with Jesus as the gospel of Matthew tells us through his last night with his disciples, his last supper with them, his time in the garden, his betrayal his trial, his crucifixion, and finally to the tomb where his body was sealed. With different voices, we'll hear these last days and hours of Jesus' life. There won't be any introduction to the scriptures. There'll be no response in between them. We'll simply move from scripture to scripture. Projected on the screens for you to reflect upon if you like, will be images from classical art depicting artists' renditions of the various scenes in the scripture that we'll hear. You see some of these hanging in our banners as well. This might be a way for you meaningfully to engage in the words that are being read. You're welcome, of course, to simply be in an attitude of quiet and prayer and reflection. It is our privilege to walk with Jesus all the way to the cross, So that when Easter comes, we will have fresh on our hearts and minds the depth of his love for us. I'll invite you to pray with me a prayer to situate and prepare our hearts and minds to hear the passion of our Lord. The words of the prayer will be on the screen and we'll pray them together. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus Christ, accept our songs of praise as you journey to your cross and enable us both to grieve at its necessity 
and to be renewed by its power. In your name we pray. Amen. One of the twelve, who was called Jesus Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? And he said, Go to the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. And when it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed. And they began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. And he answered, The one who has dipped his hands in the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. And he replied, You have said so. And while they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks to him, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for the many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will never drink of this fruit of this vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in the Father's kingdom. And when they had sung the hymn, they went to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night... Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, If this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, 
for their eyes were heavy. So, leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At least two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, 
for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priest and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the piece of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave them no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head.
After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads, saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priest also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and he, we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, that is. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. 
So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people, He has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go make it as secure as as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. From the cries of Hosanna, To the silence and desolation of of a tomb sealed the body of Jesus inside. And we hear the depth of Jesus' love for us. As we wait with the women beside the tomb. As we enter this week to walk with Jesus, we affirm the faith that binds us together and most importantly to him. We speak this faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed, which I'll invite you to join me in as you are able. Would you stand? The words of the Creed will be on the screen and together we'll unite our voices in this historic confession of the Christian faith to say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So the week that begins with shouts of Hosanna descends into a time of betrayal and trial for our Lord, and he walks every step of the way for us. In obedience to his Father, and in profound, unfathomable depths of love for this world, for us, for you and me. Jesus goes, and it is our privilege, if we have the courage, to walk with him to the cross. May the weight of this week rest on us, if only in a fraction of the way it fell on Jesus. 
And may our hearts be glad and grateful for the love and sacrifice of Jesus Christ our Lord, who for our sakes did not shun even the cross. With our love for Jesus in mind and his love for us, we sing together verses 1 through 4 of Jesus, Keep Me Near to the Cross, as we begin this walk of Holy Week. Let's sing together. From Hosanna to the cross to the tomb, Jesus goes for us. In gratitude and love, we go into the world in his name. Go and be blessed this holy week as we walk with Jesus. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. It has been such an honor to worship with you as a part of the congregation of Franklin First United Methodist Church. For information about how you can become connected with our church community, you can find us at franklinfumc.org. From there, you can sign up to receive our newsletter, find ways to serve, let us know of a prayer request, 
and make offerings that further the mission of this church. Be sure to join us again next week. We'll be here at 8.30, 10 o'clock, and 11.15. It's great to have you with us today. God bless you all.
Welcome to Franklin First United Methodist Church. Where we seek first the kingdom of God and meet the needs of others. Where hope is grown and spirits are fed. Where you are loved and the peace of Christ overcomes all. We're so glad you're here. Welcome to worship. Friends, and welcome to Franklin First United Methodist Church. What a gorgeous day that we have outside. I'm Pastor Sarah Carter, your pastor of adult ministry. And today is such a special day in the life of the church. It is the day when we celebrate both Palm and Passion Sunday, our entry into Holy Week. So if you're here for the very first time, wanted to just say welcome as you leave today. I hope that you will stop by. There's a little tower, a welcome tower, and Pastor John is out there today, and he has something special for you. If you're joining with us online, please type in the word coffee and our online host will have something special for you as well. We have a number of things that are going on this week and so I hope that you will take out your your smartphone and be able to go and open the church app. The bulletin is there along with a number of different things that will be taking place not only this week but the week following Easter that you will need to register for so we hope that you will pay attention to that. And while you're doing that, you can just check in to worship if you have not already done so today. We have a number of things that we just want to cover for you, and the first of which is out in the lobby today. You will have seen right before you came in our featured mission for the day, which is the Run for Mission. That will be happening on April the 14th at 3, and we hope that you will participate, whether or not you're going to run or walk. Just come out in the sunshine and cheer everybody on. You can do that, and you can uh, register right outside. There's a table that will be open following worship today. Second, we hope that you will be joining us for all of the different worship services that will be happening this Holy Week. And the first of that will be on Thursday for Monday Thursday, a day where we will celebrate the Eucharist, Holy Communion, as we come together to really take a focus on the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples. That will be right here on main campus in Wesley Hall at 630. And then the next day on Friday, we will be celebrating our Good Friday Tenebrae service and that will be also here on main campus 6 30 both of these will be live streamed if you're unable to come in person you can join us online for both of those very sacred and holy services and we hope to see you all there and then today you will want to come and have some joy for Holy Week. And we're going to be kicking that off today with the Easter egg hunt, which starts here at three o'clock. This is a great opportunity for you to invite your neighbors, bring your family, any friends that you have that have young children. The accessible egg hunt, which will be at 245, which is geared for our friends with special needs. And then at three o'clock, we'll be having it right out here. So make Make sure you're on time because the people are kind of like locusts. You know, they come in and once it's over, <laughs> then there are no more eggs. So we want to make sure that you are here um, for that today beginning at 3. So there are details, as I said, all of these things you can find in your church bulletin or app, as well as going online. We hope that you will join us for all of these events as we celebrate this wonderful Holy Week. And now I invite you to just take a deep breath in, in this very sacred and holy service, to invite the Holy Spirit in, to set aside anything which is on your heart or your mind, so that we can just focus all on Jesus. Jesus this morning and worship him in spirit and in truth. Friends, I would invite you to stand this morning and share the peace of Christ with one another. Welcome to worship.
Good morning, friends. Welcome to this time of worship. We are so glad that you are with us on this Palm and Passion Sunday for us. And uh, it carries two names, in case you don't know, because it is our practice, along with many friends and uh, brothers and sisters in, in the church throughout the world, to on this day not only to remember the shouts of Hosanna that welcomed Jesus triumphantly into Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday, but then to go all the way with Jesus through to Good Friday, to the cross, to feel the full weight of his week before we are ready next Sunday to sing the Alleluia's of Easter morning and proclaim that Christ is risen. So this will be a service that takes us through the full, uh, the full spectrum of emotions and feelings and experiences with the Lord. We'll have a chance to hear from the words of Scripture themselves what Jesus last week and days were like leading up to the crucifixion and that will for us shape the week ahead and hopefully make for an even more meaningful and profound Easter. We begin by hearing the story of Palm Sunday itself and Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem as conveyed to us by the Gospel of Matthew. So may I invite you to stand as you are able to watch with me as I read these words and as we begin our celebration of Palm Sunday to begin. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them. And he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, as a call to worship, we join our voices with those crowds from long ago. The words of our call to worship will be on the screen. And we'll share in their hosannas. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Friends, we sing together the sound and the songs of Hosanna as some of our children help us to celebrate as we begin with the palms of this Sunday. Let's sing together.
Indeed, how great is our God. Friends, you may be seated. I will tell you, as we enter into this time uh, during this holy week of prayer, it is time that we're going to be praying for our church, for our community, and for our world. We'll also pray to God that he will bless the offerings that we bring to support the work of Jesus Christ through this congregation. Yesterday, there were a number of things going on. Our creation care team was doing some wonderful work, planting new uh, trees, doing all sorts of work, cleaning up. And our confirmands got to hear some beautiful words and work of understanding of what goes on, not only um, here on our main campus, in God's name, tending for his creation, but also uh, they spent some time in the giving garden and got to help to begin to grow and plant 
seeds and potatoes for fresh produce that will be grown and harvested throughout the rest of the season. It's incredible the number of things that go on in the community. And just this afternoon, we will have hundreds, hundreds of children who will be here on our main campus uh, searching for eggs and experiencing God's grace and God's glory and just the joy of being together in Christian fellowship. And all of these things happen, friends, because of your generosity, your care, your giving, your time, your talents, uh, the gifts that you bring financially. All of these things fuel God's work. There are many ways that you can give to fuel God's work, and they'll be listed on the screen. You may give online through your mobile device by text or through the church app. You may send in your um, offering uh, in the mail, or our ushers will be here this morning to serve us as they pass the plate this morning as well. I would ask now that you would just bow your heads in prayer with me as we go to our Lord in prayer. O oh God of grace and God of mercy, we thank you for this beautiful day and for reawakening our souls each spring. We thank you for the opportunity to open up our campus to the community to celebrate you this afternoon at the Easter egg hunt where friends and families will gather in your love. And help us all this week, Lord, to seek you this week and in the days to come. So enter into our lives, Jesus, as you entered into Jerusalem. For we greet you this morning with palms in our hands and loud hosannas on our lips. Yet even today we still cry out, save us, O oh Lord, save us. Save us from those things that separate us from fully experiencing the love that you offer. Save us from the inward focus of, on ourselves and replace that with a laser focus on you. Give us an outward focus, Lord, to serve others in your name. And save our world, merciful God, from all of the things which get in the way of our fully experiencing you, poverty, and hunger, oppression, and inequality, anger, and hopelessness, war, and violence. Oh, dear Lord, we give these things to you, knowing that only you can solve all of these things. So forgive us, merciful God, for continuing these things in our world, and fill us with your pure light so that we may reflect Jesus in our lives. Settle our spirits, Lord that we might know just how far you will go to bring us the cup of salvation. And in the midst of all of these upcoming things going on in your story this week, Lord, betrayal and be not denial. Oh, Lord, help us to be forgiven in your name. Forgive us, Lord, for the betrayals and the denials that we still commit in our day, in our time, in our place. So bring us hope, Lord. Bring us hope where we have allowed fear and confusion to reside and bring healing of both body and mind for those who are ill and those who are suffering. And bring peace, dear Lord, to this world, especially in Israel and Gaza and Ukraine and Haiti and all other places where war and violence occurs. And Lord, we ask that you would guide the leaders, not only of our nation, but the leaders of all nations, Lord, in their decision-making, making that in somehow, in some way, that peace could prevail. And we pray, dear Lord, for all who are grieving. In our community, dear Lord, we especially ask that you would pour out your spirit upon David and Carla Landrum at the, and his family at the death of David's father, and Phil and Lori Jeros and family at the loss of Lori's mother. And Lord, we ask that you would let the warmth of your mercy and your love pour over us here now and to those who are joining us online as we prepare to walk this final week of the, to the cross with you. Lord Jesus, in your costly gifts to us, you have provided us a way of, to live and to serve. So through the gifts that we offer you this day, we express our longing to follow and serve wherever you may lead. So bless these tithes and offerings and fill them with your power so that lives may be touched, the world may be transformed, and more people may come to know you. 
So help us, Lord, not to rush into this Easter morning. This we quiet our hearts and our souls and grant us time to be holy as we wait and we listen for you. We yield ourselves to you and to your will in this holy week. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ who gave his life for us and taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's tithes and offerings will now be received.
You may be seated, my friends. You may be seated. In this service, on this day, we go from what's arguably the highest heights of joyful experience to the weightiest depths of sorrow and sadness. And honestly, it's by design. There probably was a time, maybe you remember, I certainly do growing up even, where we go to church on the Sunday before Easter and it was Palm Sunday and it was from wall to wall, Hosanna in the highest joyful cries of thanksgiving to the king who was coming. And then the next week, it would be, Alleluia, Christ is risen. And somewhere along the lines, the church of Jesus Christ began to recognize that if someone were only to come on Palm Sunday and then come back on Easter Sunday and hear Hosanna the one Sunday and hear Alleluia the next Sunday, they could very easily come away thinking, you know, this Jesus guy has pretty good days all the time. But you and I know that there's much more to the story. There likely was a time where one could expect that folks who worshipped on Palm Sunday would also worship on Maundy Thursday and hear of Jesus last night with his disciples, of his betrayal. And then that folks would also be able to worship also on Good Friday and, and hear of the cross and Jesus' death upon it. And thereby be fully ready for Easter morning, recognizing everything that Jesus had gone through. But with the busyness and the fullness of this world and our lives, it may be less likely that folks and families are able to do that. With that said, I certainly invite you and hope that you can worship with us on Holy Thursday, Maundy Thursday, and Good Friday this week. There'll be moving services that will remind us and take us with Jesus through those moments and times in his life in great detail. But in the wisdom of the church, and now for many years, we've taken this day not only to remember and recognize the palms, the shouts of Hosanna, but also the passion of Jesus, his suffering and death, so that we might fully be ready to appreciate the power of his love for us, the lengths that he submitted himself to go on our behalf, so that when Easter comes, we'll be able to sing Alleluia with a full appreciation for what Jesus has undertaken on our behalf. So in this latter portion of our worship today, we turn fully into the passion of Jesus Christ our Lord. In just a moment, with the words of the Gospel of Matthew, we will hear the story of Jesus' last days and hours. It takes the place of our regular sermon time, and I'm appreciative that not once today when I said we weren't having a sermon did anybody applaud. That is just really, that means a lot to me. I appreciate that. With different voices and with images from art through the ages projected on the screens, we will simply let the Word of God speak for itself today and let the Gospel of Matthew itself be our proclamation. I invite you to listen closely 
to watch the screens or the images that hang behind me on the banners as each scene is depicted. Or perhaps simply to close your eyes and to imagine in your own mind what it might have been like to be there with the Lord. Our readers will be there at the lectern and they will not give any introductions. There will be no response between the readings. It will simply go from one passage of Scripture to another as we are privileged to walk with Jesus all the way to the cross and to the silence of a tomb. As we prepare our hearts and minds for this moment, I'd invite you to pray with me. There's a prayer that will prepare us, and I invite you to join your voice with mine. Will you pray? Lord Jesus Christ, accept our songs of praise as you journey to your cross, and enable us to grieve at its necessity and to be renewed by its power. In your name we pray. Amen. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment on, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? And he said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover supper at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they went to prepare the Passover meal. And when it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed. And they began to say to him one after another, surely, Lord, it is not I. And he answered, the one who has dipped his hands in the bowl will betray me. And the son of man goes as it is written of him, but woe to the one whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. So Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. And he said, You have said so. And while they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread. And after blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take Eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to him, saying, Drink of, from it, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. And Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all of the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. 
And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little, little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into this time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came to Jesus and said, greetings, rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its place, for all who seek, or for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled which say it must happen this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard.
heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priest and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, 
he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to be crucified. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lema, Sabachthani, that is. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait. Let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. 
After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people, He has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go. Make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. The week that begins for Jesus with loud cries of Hosanna, shouts of victory and welcome, concludes in the silence of a tomb. It is our privilege to walk with Jesus through the fullness of this week and to see the depth of his love for us. To affirm our faith in him and in the love that God has given the world in him, we share in the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. So I'll invite you to stand as you are able. The words of the Creed will be on the screen and together we'll unite our voice to affirm our faith. Will you join me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. From Palm Sunday to Good Friday to the quiet of Easter morning, having gone with Jesus the full breadth of this week, we'll have the opportunity to genuinely appreciate 
the good news that we'll find Easter morning. But do not be too quick to rush through this week. Do not be too quick to move from Palm Sunday to Easter morning. Rather, to appreciate the profound gravity of our Lord's love and with courage that he gives us by his grace. Let us walk with Jesus and feel the weight of his love for us. We sing together with grateful hearts. Will you join us?
so we walk with Jesus from Palm Sunday to Good Friday, knowing that Easter morning is just ahead. This week, may you walk and feel and know the love of Christ for you. And by his mercy, may we share that love with this world. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.